Okay, welcome back everyone, Zaf here to yet another Soul Loving Rise video. For today's video, we have a Battlefield Time Guide, yes that's right, for Season 3, The Almighty Shaman. This boss is quite annoying as you know, but very doable. I'll go over the team you need, the hunters you can use, the artifacts, the builds, etc. Everything you need to do, including the full battle, so let's go ahead and cover it. But just really quick, make sure you're supporting us on Netmarble Supporter Program. This is how you get free codes from me. Every few weeks we had some codes to give out to the viewers, so make sure you press that support button, it is free. It costs nothing to support, and all you get is some juicy essence codes, so make sure you support. And just really quick, a big congrats to Lyron and Cham for being the first commenters on the last two videos. Here is your shoutout and enjoy your very juicy Discord roll. So with the Shaman, honestly speaking, there isn't too much variety right now with the hunters you can use. That's just because this set of hunters works so well, and because we're kind of limited in terms of the win hunters we have, I didn't try Dongso for this run, but I'm assuming he could potentially substitute for one of these hunters, but having Wu, Park, and Mirai is perfect for this run, and I'll show you why that is. But just to provide you a very brief explanation, Wu provides break, Park provides AoE that's needed for phase 1, and then Miri is obviously a DPS, she is vital for this run. And for artifacts, honestly, pretty standard, though I'm not a big fan of using all curse, what I did try as well as curse is this set right here, the outstanding ability, though for this run you do need more mana, meaning the effect won't come into play, that's what I found, give it a try if you want, it's a good artifact, but for this run, and running Mirai, it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it, a little bit unfortunate, but that's fine. And honestly, the artifact sets here are very standard if you ask me. For your breaker, you just want to run this set here, that being Salt Analysis, providing us a 30% break effect bonus, very OP, providing a quick break effect, and you're running Outstanding Connection as well, a 28% attack boost, very strong. You can use other artifacts, but honestly speaking, this one provides the most bonus to Mirai, which will be your main DPS, so don't really stray from this set here. You could honestly go all greed, but it wouldn't have the same effect. The boss battle at the end will be much harder, so run this, trust me. Same with the Blessing set, very strong. V8 set effect when tagging out, 20% damage increase, very very strong. The duration is very long as well, so perfect for this run. You can run 4 of the outstanding ability, that'll work, with a 2 piece curse and also a 2 set toughness for example, that could work, providing you crit, damage and more damage. That would be ideal if, if Miri didn't have so many mana issues, I tried it, it didn't really work out, I just defaulted to all curse, you can try both, removing artifacts is free right now, so it's the perfect time to test, and for your shadow is very standard, Igris for the crit bonus, the Shadow's Authority is some of the best in this game. 7% crit, me oh my, that is so strong. And for our next two Shadows, you can see here, I'm not using my best Shadows. Although I have Tuscan Blades at Elite Knight, I chose not to use them. You want to use someone like Iron, and also someone like Serbi, because, look at this, a 5% permanent bonus to your damage. Once the Concentrated Flame skill goes off, very nice, and with Iron, same thing. You can see, Defense decrease, very powerful. Once the Charge Iron skill plays off, you get a 12% reduction to defense, letting you deal even more damage, which is vital for this run. So, speaking of this run, let me show you exactly what we did. But just before I forget for the weapons, well, with Park, she's the only hunter here that needs a specific weapon to do pretty well here. You have to remember, with these runs, on the new Battlefield time, there is a 200% damage bonus. We're used to 150%, for the elemental type bonus, but here in Battlefield Time, they buffed it to 200%. That's why it's so important to run Wind Hunters, for example, the correct elemental type. Otherwise, you'll have a very tough time, trust me. So, for her weapon, this weapon right here is perfect for these runs, increasing the user's damage dealt based on their elemental weakness by 12%, which is very strong. So, this is the most well rounded weapon. You want to make sure you have it to 810, if not, you can go ahead and use the rare version, get all the way to 810, it'll provide a nice bonus. So the bonus for rares, if you have to 810, let me show you right here, once I find one, oh my goodness, we have so many weapons stacked up, let's see, can I find one here, there we go, 10% attack, defense, and HP, vital, very strong, 
In my opinion, it's much stronger than an A5SR weapon. A10 to provide this bonus here, so OP. For Mirai, you should have a weapon, since it's her banner right now. And for Wu, obviously you want to use his weapon if you have it, if you didn't salvage it, if you don't have his weapon, just go for rare that you have all the way to A10 or an SR to A10. Both would work, not too important. Wu doesn't really deal damage here, he just provides the break, which is exactly what he's used for. And just a very quick heads up, the only things that matter for this run is your hunter advancements, yes that's right, your levels do not matter, your weapon levels do not matter, your weapon advancements do matter, and your skill levels and artifact sets do matter, the advancements on your artifacts do not matter, the enhancements that is, the artifact levels don't matter, only the set effects matter, so I'm making sure you know this, otherwise you might be a bit confused, and for skills for the level priority, you want Park's ultimate leveled up, very important here, and also Mirai's two basic skills, those are priority for this battlefield time. So let's go over the run, that way you know exactly what to do, and at the end of the run, after I'm done explaining things, I'll just let the run play out with no commentary, just so you can watch it and understand exactly what we do, because learning the run is very important, that way you minimize your time. So let's get right into it. And just before we start, I want to show you two things that would be very helpful for this run. So the first thing is moonwalking with Wu. You want to use this Q-Q-Q, right? See how we're running so fast going all the way to the back? I'll explain why this is important shortly. And one more thing I do want you to know is that you don't want to QT on your hunters too often. Even though I QT once or twice, you don't want to do it. What you want to do is manually swap. The reason why you're manually swapping is to save time and also if in the later rounds, that being the boss fight with the Almighty Shaman, if you're finding you're not dealing with damage, you have to swap between hunters to basically give Mire some mana, what you want to do is, to maximize on your damage, is to just swap. See here? Look, attack increased by swapping. Watch this. We're going to swap to Mire. Boom. Burning Blessing set is applied to her. See the set bonuses at the bottom. That's why you just want to manually swap to stack those bonuses. The bonuses are vital here. They have cooldowns though, but the bonuses are vital. So make sure you're applying them when you can. Otherwise, your damage will be nerfed. You want to maximize your damage. That's why you're running artifact sets to get as much damage as possible. But again, they have cooldowns. So don't just spam between the sets. Make sure to actually time them, okay? You'll see here, I think the cooldown is off. Uh, let me show you. And boom, see attack increase. So make sure you time it. All these sets are very important. And Burning Blessing, yes, you saw there. All these set effects being applied. So let's go back straight to the run. Okay, so starting things off, let me put at 0.5% speed, just so you understand exactly what we do. You want to start moonwalking with Wu. Yes, that's right. So you want to use his Q first, not his dash. I kind of messed up here. Use his Q, use your dash, use his Q, use your dash, use his Q. And then once you get that final dash off, you just want to run forward. So Keep going all the way, run, 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 moonwalk, moonwalk, pretty funny here. Go all the way to the end. So yeah, that's why, you saw that attack there. That's why you want to Q first, so your dash will be activated. That way you're running way faster and no interruption there. So just a very important tip. So we're running all the way to the back, all the way to the back here. And then we're going to swap to park whenever we want. We can tank the damage, no problem. So once we spawn out of park, instantly use her ultimate. Her ultimate is Sopi here, that's why you want multiple advancements for her, and her ultimate comes in so clutch here, basically hitting all the mobs, and then instantly QT to Mire. she'll hit the closest mob usually, or just miss everything, that happens, no worries, use her ultimate next, her ultimate provides AoE, which is perfect for this, clearing all the mobs, and the mobs you don't clear, you generally want to use your Q to dash towards them, as you can see, we had one mob in the back, very annoying. That kind of killed the run a little bit, so you can optimize it much better. Once this guy spawns, you want to time your E, dealing as much damage as possible. Use your Q if you have it up, and boom. Very quick phase two. Now, for the Shaman, you want to swap into Wu ASAP. If you have your Q up, you can use your Q first, and then QT right into Wu, providing more break damage. You'll see. So we're going to dash forward, swap right into Wu, Get his break in, perfect. Boom, boom, boom. Use his E, Q, 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 use his E. That way his E comes up much faster and make sure you are auto attacking between them. Wu's auto attacks do provide break, very important. 
and we're just breaking, 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 doing what we can. The break is pretty quick here. You don't want to use your shadows, don't want to swap. Just keep breaking very easy. And you'll see here, boom and broken. So you want to swap into park now. Don't use your QTE. It takes way too long. So swap into park. I know I use my QTE there. No worries. Total mistake. Use your shadows to instantly go into Mirai. And then use your Q, use your E, and an auto attack. And your ulti should be up. Then use your ultimate. That way your skills will be refreshed. And you'll deal so much more damage. Start out with your Q. Your Q provides an attack bonus depending on your advancements. So Q providing a 12% I believe attack bonus. Then use your E. And make sure when the shaman is using a skill to not use one of your skills because some of them make him invincible. Like this one here. All these invincibility frames. So make sure to time your skills. We're waiting, waiting, waiting for him to lose that invincibility. Once he does, we're going to pop in all our skills again. You'll see waiting for that to come off here we're going to use our q when it's off there we go and boom use our q asap get the damage bonus again use our e very standard dodging when we can some of these skills are very quick like this one here so you don't have to dodge all the time but try to dodge the ones that make you stunned super annoying you do not want to lose that out and there we go no stuns there dealing damage when we can pretty standard run honestly providing as much damage as we can, no cooldowns. You do not want to wait for any cooldowns. So as you see here, he's going to basically run away. And you have to note, he does use a totem very soon. I rewind it back. So you see shortly, he's going to use that totem. Very annoying. Again, more invincibility frames. By that point, you can just swap into Wu, for example. That way, when you swap back, you get the outstanding connection. You'll see, going to dash forward to the pillar here, the totem, whatever it's called. And then boom, very easy. Go back to him, swap into Mirai. Uh, you can ulti. Uh, her ulti is kind of quick, so it doesn't really put in too much time. We did it at 137, now it's at 141, so four seconds long, not too bad. And then Q and E, and it's done. A lot of optimizations there, though. You want to time your Q and E's better and make sure to avoid that totem phase. If you can, your time will be so strong, so strong. I did this run pretty quick just get the concept out that way you know what to do and that way you can start grinding it out this is the best method for now i wonder if anything better is going to come out if there is i'll do an updated video but right now this should probably be enough to get you a tall placing spot so if you enjoyed drop your like be sure to subscribe to the channel that way i know you want more content like this and of course do support us we are ranked number one for a reason because we always provide the most codes this was Zaf signing out.